the RWR rework is finally here, and Gaijin really went all out with this one. There's a lot of new functionality, a lot of new stuff to figure out, and more importantly, there is a huge amount of variation between different RWRs, which is not something we had before. The goal of this video is to help you get started with these RWRs. I did a lot of work on this video on the dev server, but it is up to date as of the morning of the update. I expect things to change, but hopefully this video doesn't become out of date too quickly. The fundamentals are still the same. The RWR is a passive system that detects incoming radar waves, it's completely separate from your own radar, and it can't distinguish between friendly and enemy, and it can't determine range or altitude. There are still blind spots above and below your plane, so if you point your belly at a threat for example, you won't get a warning at all even if he's still locking you. Some indications and sounds are still the same as before. A radar in search mode will show up as occasional flashes on the display, and the audio warning is this ping sound. If a radar locks onto you, you can hear one of two things. For RWRs that have proper lock detection, the lock warning is a solid line to the contact, and the sound is the same as before. However, with the rework, some RWRs have lost this proper lock detection ability. If something locks onto these RWRs, they will basically get one constant ping, so you can still tell when you're being locked on by someone. And a completely new functionality is missile launch alerts for CW guided missiles as well as certain surface to air missiles. This warning can come in the form of a light turning on but is usually denoted by the line to the target flashing and this new audio warning. Again, which of these functions an RWR has depends on the RWR itself. Some RWRs have all four interactions. Keep in mind we still do not have missile approach warning systems, so these new missile launch warnings are limited when it comes to what kind of missiles they can warn against. Before we get into RWRs, a concept you need to know about is radar bands. Essentially, every radar in the game operates in a certain frequency range called a band, and you can check which band a radar uses by looking at it in X-ray view in the hangar. Radar bands are named with letters. For your RWR to be able to detect that radar, it has to be able to detect its band. So if you want to detect a G-band radar, your RWR has to support detection of band G. Radar bands don't matter too much for aircraft since every aircraft radar uses band I except for the Kurnaus 2000's radar which uses band J, and every RWR can detect band I. For ground-based radars, there's a lot more variation, and usually if an anti-air has separate search and tracking radars, they will use different bands, so you might be able to pick up one radar but not the other. You can check to see what bands your plane's RWR can detect by hovering over the pilot in the hangar, and here you can also see the name of the RWR. I'm going to go through the RWRs based on name and not what plane has what RWR, so it's up to you to find the name of the RWR your plane has. I've sorted RWRs into six basic groups and increasing levels of information given. Starting with audio only RWRs, which are pretty uncommon. These don't give any directional information or any information about what kind of radar they're detecting. They just beep at you when they detect a search radar and beep harder when something locks on. These don't give launch warnings either. Good luck. Next we have what I'm calling semi-directional RWRs. The only one of this type is the SP-02, which is a Stone Age RWR. It only has one receiver on the rear of the plane, so it can only detect radars that are directly behind you. Useful for knowing if a fighter sits on your tail and locks on, but that's about it. Then we have directional RWRs, which can show roughly what direction they're detecting radar sources from. The most famous example of this is the SP-010, which has four antennas, so eight total directions it can indicate, but again, these RWRs don't tell you anything about the radar source itself, and they don't give launch warnings. For these RWRs, each segment is highlighted to make it easier to tell what area each receiver covers, and using this information, you can get a rough idea of where you're being locked from. And then we come to directional RWRs with additional indicator lights. These lights will come on if at least one detected signature meets the criteria for that light. Some of these lights are for threats that are not in the game and will likely never be in the game. Just ignore those lights, I'll make it clear which ones those are. Which RWRs have which lights varies between RWRs, and on top of that, some RWRs have different meanings for the same lights, so it became clear to me that it wasn't possible to do this section without talking about each individual RWR. Most lights are tied to a specific list of radars, and if a radar isn't on the list, the light won't come on. If a threat isn't on any list for any of the lights, you'll still get a directional ping, but no light will come on. I could, and probably will, make an entire video about these lights, and I'm still trying to completely figure some of them out myself, but for now I'm going to try to run through these as fast as possible so you can get a general idea of what the lights mean. Starting with the very common ANAPR25 and its copy-paste variants, the S125 light is for the S125 SAM, which you can actually find on Soviet Destroyer Bravi, so as of right now you won't see this light outside of a custom battle, but it does work. Next up is AI for Airborne Intercept. This lights up with a long list of airborne radars. 
After that is AIRO, which stands for Airborne Intercept Something Something. I don't know what RO stands for, but this light is for those short range radar gun sights you find on Korean War jets and stuff like the MiG 21F and Kefir. After that are S75 and SA75 lights. These are for SAMs that are not in the game, so these lights are unused. And the AAA slash AI light also isn't tied to anything, so that light is unused as well. Moving on to APR36, S125 is again for Bravi SAM. AAA slash AI now merges both AI groups from before into one group that is tied to an even longer list of airborne radars. S75, 2K11, and SA75 are all unused, and AAA is still unused. So this RWR has five lights you won't ever see come on in ARB, and the sixth light tells you basically nothing. And moving over to the Soviet side, we find the SPO-15 and SPO-15LM, which are ubiquitous on high-tier Soviet jets. AI is again airborne intercept and includes a massive list of aircraft radars. PD is pulse Doppler, and this lights up with a separate list of pulse Doppler radars. It doesn't actually detect if those radars are in pulse Doppler mode or not. It just tells you that a radar is a pulse Doppler capable threat. NH is for the Nike Hercules missile system, so that light is unused. Hawk is for the Hawk SAM, so that light is unused. AD is for air defense and is tied to a handful of SPAA radars. And finally, CW is for continuous wave alert. CW is the guidance method used by missiles like AIM-7 Sparrow, R-27R, and Super 530D, so if your RWR throws a CW alert, it's telling you that an enemy is probably guiding a missile at your plane right now and you need to do something. The light itself doesn't always come on with CW alerts, but this is one of the RWRs with lock and launch symbology with sound on the display itself, and with this additional light at the top which basically repeats what the display and sound are doing. Heading over to Sweden, we have APP-27, only two lights here. Pulse is tied to a massive list of radars and doesn't really tell you anything. The important light is CW slash PD, which comes on with CW, but also apparently when the RWR detects certain Pulse Doppler equipped radars. There's no audio missile launch warning, no launch text, and the RWR doesn't flash. So you will have to actually look for this light to come on to notice the CW launch warning, so pay attention. Then there's the improved APP-73. The pulse light is the same, but now instead of a CW PD light, you get two lights for PD and a separate light for CW. MPRF and HPRF are for two groups of pulse Doppler radars grouped by pulse repetition frequency. Again, the RWR doesn't detect the actual PRF mode for the radars that can switch between them. It's only grouping radars themselves. And then CW is the same as before, except it lives on its own light now and doesn't have to share with anything. Still no audio warning, so pay attention to this light, and if it comes on, you better figure out what's causing it to do that pretty quick. Then we have Mirage Detecteur, which is basically a worse APP-27. It doesn't get proper lock warnings, and it's horribly imprecise when it comes to finding angles. Pulse is tied to a list of Pulse airborne radars, and CW is for CW launch. Again, no audio warning, so you will have to pay attention to the light. And finally, the last RWR of this type is ARI-18223, and if the naming isn't bad enough for you, this RWR is very goofy. I talked about needing to understand radar bands earlier, this is a case of why. The E through H light is for radar bands E through H, I for band I, J for band J, like I said, virtually all aircraft radars are on band I, so the other lights will mostly be for ground-based radars. However, for whatever reason, the Sapphire 21 and 23 radars have an override and are grouped with band J. The pulse light is for a bunch of pulse radars, TWS is for Bravi as well as two specific Soviet SPAA radars, and CW is not only for actual CW alerts but also comes on when the RWR detects certain CW equipped threats. But it's not such a big deal because this RWR has proper lock and launch audio tones like the SPO-15 which is pretty helpful. The next group of RWRs have what I'm calling partially digital displays. These RWRs can display text for each contact but they only have three texts that they can show. I'll start with ARI-18228 because it's very similar to the 18223 I just went over. Really the only difference is the new display which can show E through H, I, or J for each contact, so with this RWR you've got a little bit extra information and awareness. The ALR-45V is another absolute specimen of an RWR and it's completely unique in its symbology. It's another RWR with a digital display that can only display three texts, low, mid, and high. These do not refer to threat level or altitude, I believe they generally refer to radar bands, but I don't know for sure. Currently nothing shows up as low, most radars show up as mid, and only the Sapphire 21 and 23 show up as high. As for lights, SAM low is unused, SAM is triggered by Bravi's S125 and nothing else, SAM high is unused, AAA low is unused, AAA slash AI gets set off by just about every aircraft and anti-air radar, and AI high gets set off by the Sapphire 21 and 23 radars. 
Okay, the previous 9 RWRs were all pretty confusing. Thankfully, modern RWRs with fully digital displays are not only the most informative, but also pretty straightforward to understand. For the vast majority of contacts, you'll see the name of each contact based on what radar is detected. For example, F-16 if it's an F-16, 2S-6 if it's a Tunguska, and so on. Keep in mind it's going off the radar itself and not the plane the radar is attached to, which is why Yak-141 shows up as MiG-29, F-4EJ Kai shows up as F-16, and AV-8B shows up as F-18, despite the Hornet not even being in the game. If a contact is not in the RWR's list of contacts, it will show up as a question mark. Incoming active radar homing missiles say MSL. New contacts that just popped up have a circle around them, and after about 5 seconds the circle goes away, and if two contacts are overlapping they will blink back and forth so you can read both of them. And as you would expect, a solid line means a contact is locking you, and a flashing line means that contact has launched on you. Pretty much all of these RWRs are the same, there's really only two groups of them, and the only difference is that some of them can pick up band D and identify a few of those threats. And the final group of RWRs is fully digital RWRs with additional lights. These have up to four lights at the bottom, and these lights are just extras. By this point you should know what these do, there aren't really any surprises here, so AI is tied to a list of airborne radars, AAA to a list of AAA radars, and so on. So that covers all of them, not a deep dive and I might not have gotten everything 100% accurate, but hopefully this does get you pointed in the right direction. Again, this rework is really complicated to fully understand. If you fly a lot of jets, you're going to have to get used to a lot of RWRs, and it might take a game or two to adjust once you switch RWRs. I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible, so there's a bit of compromise in how in-depth it is, but that's a trade-off I was willing to make, so at some point I might end up replacing this video entirely. We'll see. I'll probably end up pinning a comment with corrections because I do expect there to be some. In any case, this did take a lot of work, and if you appreciate this kind of video, consider becoming a channel member to support me directly. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, I'll try my best to answer them. Come hang out on Discord, and as always, thanks for watching.